Want to know the laziest and most effective way to get the most out of your travel? I share my tips along with my Oregon adventures and I did it again. I messed up my truck. Welcome to my channel. I'm Liz Amazing. I live full time in my RV while I'm traveling the country and it's my mission to help and inspire others. So who has time to plan out sightseeing, especially when you're traveling all the time? I sure don't. I can't wait to share with you my super lazy tips. But first of all, what happened with my truck? Now some of you know that my camper hit the back window the day I took my brand new camper off the lot at the dealership. That was because one of the techs at the dealership said there's no way that could happen. There's no way that the front corner could hit the window. Well, I learned from that was that I absolutely need to see for myself and just not trust what someone tells me. I should have been watching the trailer. That window never would have broken. But thank goodness for insurance, right? So now I have this new damage. I could not believe this and I couldn't figure out how I did it. I actually had to ask somebody. So when you look at this damage, can you tell what I did? I'm going to give you a little bit of time to ponder it and I'm going to get back to that later and tell you exactly what I did. You won't believe it. So let's talk about Oregon. I am so in love. I was there for a month and I cannot wait to go back. I spent about 10 days on the coast and the rest on the interior. I think Oregon is the country's best kept secret. It just has so much natural beauty. And get this, they pump your gas for you there. You don't pump your own gas when you're in Oregon and there's no sales tax. So I thought that was just amazing. I stayed uh, on the coast right there. It was beautiful. And let me tell you what is so amazing about the beaches in Oregon is that mountains and beaches are together. I just could not get over that. If you're a mountain person married to a beach person, this is where you want to go. So much natural beauty and the temperatures are mild. Even in the hottest part of the year, the rest of the country was like suffering in triple digits and in the 90s. We were having highs of 65 in August on the beach. Now, a lot of days are foggy, but it's still just so beautiful. And like I said, I just can't wait to go back. So my first super lazy tip to get the most out of your travel is to stop at scenic overlooks, particularly if the parking lot is big or if there's a sign saying scenic overlook in a half mile, stop. Some of my best pictures and my best drone footage is from stopping at these places. Now you don't need to stop at every single one, but if you haven't seen one for a while and then suddenly there's a sign that says Vista, definitely take advantage of that. Tip two is get an early start. Make the most of your day, make the most of your travels by getting up early and getting out the door. You're gonna be able to find parking spaces, you're gonna avoid traffic, you're gonna be able to beat the heat. Here at Multnomah Falls, they actually close the parking lots and you can't see the falls because the parking lots fill up. So take that little bit of annoyance that you have for getting up early in the morning on vacation and weigh that against all day annoyance if you're having to deal with crowds and traffic or you can't get in and see what you really want to see. The next tip is just try it. You don't have to make a full commitment if there's something you're not quite sure you can do. This is Beacon Rock and I met my camping neighbor Paul here and we both wanted to climb it but neither of us felt like we had the energy to do it. So we said, well, let's just go part way. Well, it turned out it was easy. There were some ramps, it wasn't that steep and it ended up just being so worth it. It was gorgeous and it was the highlight of our day. The next tip is trust your gut. Go down that road if it looks interesting. Pull along the side of the road and stop to get a closer look at a beautiful view. I have taken some of my best pictures by doing exactly that. And in fact, I drove down a road and saw this beautiful light just because I followed my gut. Well, this next tip has got to be my laziest sightseeing tip ever, and that's using Google Images. So what you wanna do is whatever town you're in, 
type that town's name into Google and look under images. And then whatever comes up that interests you, then that might be something you want to explore. In this case, I typed in Bend, Oregon, and Smith Rock came up. Smith Rock is a 3,200 foot tall rock that just towers over everything and is really something to see. It actually is known as the birthplace of rock climbing, and you can go there today and rock climb, as well as just hike around and explore. My next lazy tip is just ask your fellow travelers what they recommend that you go see. So this could be a fellow hotel guest, or in my case, my campground neighbor. He recommended that I go to Paulina Point. Let me know that I'm pronouncing it right. It's spelled Paulina, but I believe it's pronounced Paulina. So you have to drive four miles on this washboard gravel road, and you don't have to have four-wheel drive, but you just can't go fast. And if you are a white knuckle passenger, you may not want to look out your window because there's definitely some drop offs on the way up. If you can, definitely look out and enjoy the view. It is really pretty as you go up. Or you could be hardcore and you could bike up. I cannot believe these guys did, but the payoff on the top is worth it. You're standing on top of a volcano and you are enjoying just a fabulous view. Now this stuff here, uh, this brown stuff is rock. It's called, I believe, the obsidian layer. Again, tell me if I'm not saying that right, but that is the lava rock. So when you get down from Polina Point, you actually can walk amongst this lava. You can actually walk on the lava flow. And speaking of lava, so much of this area has this red lava rock. I'm used to seeing that in nurseries to use as mulch. It's so crazy to see this naturally all over the ground. My next lazy tip is just ask the locals where to go. So when I got my haircut, my hairstylist said, oh, you've got to do the Cascade Scenic Highway. Well, that's 210 miles. But she said, look, you just wanna do this one section and go to this certain lake called Cultus Lake. And it was just so gorgeous. I mean, you could definitely do the all day drive, but 210 miles was more than I wanted to do. So I was able to find just the highlight. And it wasn't just lakes, there's lots of great scenery there too. The next tip is the big stuff is most likely worth the drive. If you are traveling and you're really far from home and you don't feel like that you're going to be in the area again and there is a big marquee attraction, maybe it's an hour and a half, two hours from you, go do it. You'll be sad when you get home and you realize that you were that close and you missed out. So here Mango and I are driving a couple hours to go see something. And oh, here's a mini tip right here that I'm just going to throw in. Here's a bonus tip. Eat local. So I'm in cherry country, so I'm buying cherries and it's a... It's a really great way to enrich your travel is to make sure that you eat local. You go to restaurants and just really enjoy the local food. So we are headed to Crater Lake National Park. And the reason we're going is number one, I'm on a quest to see all the national parks. But number two, everyone that I had talked to that had been to Crater Lake told me about the same thing. And they said, I cried when I saw it. It was just so beautiful. I just started tearing up and I was like, oh my gosh, I got to go see it. So Crater Lake is the deepest lake in the country and it's completely naturally fed by snow melt and rain. Just wow, right? Just wow, highly recommend. And there's other scenery too. You can drive all around the lake and um, just take in the sights. You can stop and picnic. There's lots of hikes. There's even a boat ride you can take in the lake. So here's something funny. I was on a very curvy road and I learned that Mango actually knows to lean into the curves. Oh my goodness, I thought that was just so cute and I'm glad that I recorded it. I tell you what, I need to buy a motorcycle and put him on the back. I think he'd be a great little rider. So I have one more tip left and it's awesome, but first I wanna tell you what I did to my truck. So when I moved from one campground to another, when I unhitched my camper, I saw the damage and I had no idea what, what it was. I couldn't think that my camper would hit it because it sits so much higher than the truck. I had to ask somebody and here's what I learned. 
it actually was the camper. When I left the campground, I had to go up a steep hill and then turn right onto a flat road. And so what happened was as my truck got onto the level grade, the camper was still on the hill and it ground down into the truck. There actually is a dent in the truck. So what I learned is I need to be more camper aware. I need to be more aware of what my trailer is doing. I could have just as easily turned left and made a U-turn and avoided that situation. So what oops moments have you done with your camper? Make me feel better and share your story in the comments. My next tip is you don't always have to be in the car traveling and sightseeing. You can use the amenities that are right there at your hotel or campground. Use the pool, use whatever they have to offer. At this campground, they have a lazy river where they actually pick you up an hour later and you can just go tubing. This isn't something I ordinarily will do, but because they offered it, I went ahead and did it and it was a highlight. I had so much fun. If you want to be part of a community where we help support and inspire each other, then join the amazing team, the A-Team. You can join by subscribing. And if you like this video, you'll love the next one. I'll see you in the next video.